All right, as 3DS Max opens up, this is module 13. I want to show you how to make the tables, the chairs, the uh, pop machine. Uh, what else is there? The garbage can and the uh, mustard and ketchup bottle, as well as a receptacle that you're going to place, a cabinet that you're going to place, um, napkins and stuff. And there's a cash register, but... Uh, you shouldn't be able to know how to do that. You should be able to know how to do this, too. Essentially, this is what we've been doing since week one of this program. But I'm going to, because it can seem tricky, and we went on Christmas break. And you probably lost a lot of that information or forgot it. So what I'm going to do is start with something. I don't know what I'm going to model first, but I'm going to put it on this plane here first and I'm gonna fly through this when I do it because you have the ability or the luxury of pausing the video and watching what I do I'll explain what I do but I'm gonna do it quickly because you have the power of the pause button so I'm gonna create a standard material and set up the first thing I'm gonna model which is gonna be whatever picture is in the folder first these guys all right all right on here I'm gonna do the ketchup and mustard bottle these are fairly easy essentially it's just a cylinder with another cylinder and another cylinder on top of it that can all be extruded from the same cylinder so when I turn these on I can't see the edge faces I'm gonna press F4 and turn that on that's week two stuff. So I'm going to turn off the height segments here because they're pointless. They're just, uh, they're not needed. Now what I'm going to do is start working on this cap right here. So I'm going to turn this into edib edible poly and I'm going to go to polygon mode, which is number four on the keyboard. Select that polygon. I'm going to inset it um, to the radius of that right there, that top lid. And it looks like it goes in a lot further than it pops back out for the lid. So I'm going to make this top a little bit smaller then the lid's going to be, and then I'm going to extrude this, right click on the numbers to send that number back down to zero. And then I'm going to do the same thing twice, and I'm going to hit the check mark. And on this one, I'm just going to press R for scale, make sure that I have the white scale button here. I'm going to scale this up to the height that it needs to be, which is about there. And it looks like I've got good clearance there, but I'm going to click the grow button to select the polygons underneath it and raise it slightly on the Z axis. I can do that down here as well for a little more control. And now I'm just going to extrude this top here the height of that cap whoops I just want this to be raised uh, and it looks like that's good right there now what I'm gonna do is inset the top polygon inset um, to about that size right there maybe a little smaller and now I'm going to extrude you can also bevel bevel extrudes and then lets you scale the polygon that you're beveling but um, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to extrude it, press R, and scale that down. And I'll check to see what it looks like. It looks like it needs to be a little taller, so I'm going to press 1 for vertice mode or this button here. I'm going to select the top row. I'm going to increase the height so it looks a little better. And I'm going to do the same thing with the top. All right, so that could be a ketchup or a mustard bottle. What you do is copy it, so just hold shift while you move it. And then you can add a material or you can change the color up here. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to hide these. Uh, right click, hide selection. And now I'm going to go to the next thing. And on these planes that I'm using simply as reference, I'm going to turn off the edges because you don't want any edges on something if you don't need it because it just increases the file size and creates lag eventually. So I'm going to press M, create another material. Um, I'm just going to click standard here, drag it down. And just out of good practice, I'm going to name... I'm sorry, and I'm not going to name that. I would if I was doing it myself for my project, but uh, I'm going to do the table and chairs now, so I'm just going to slam it on here for a reference image. And I'm going to start with the table in the middle. So I'm going to make that a box, and I'm going to do it right. You know what? I should do the brace first, the table uh, frame. So I'm going to just do a skinny, skinny box for the top of that and I'm going to convert it into an edible poly and 
I'm going to select this row of edges here, two on the keyboard, connect. I'm going to drag this edge down. It's going to be the thickness of this bottom brace. And then I'm just going to select the polygons on either side and extrude them. Um, the distance that it looks like it needs to be. And it looks like I need to make the top section a little bit taller. So I'm just going to select the top polygon here and press W and move it up a bit. And then I'm going to press 4 again. I still have the outside, well I should have the outside polygon selected. And I'm going to extrude them slightly. So I'm going to hit the extrude button. And I'm going to right click on the arrows on the number that I'm extruding it. And I'm going to extrude it the width or the thickness of this bar here. Um, I'm eyeballing this. And click the check mark. And then I'm going to select the polygons on either side of that new section that I just made on both ends. And I'm going to extrude out to where I'm going to put the chairs. So I'm putting two chairs there. So they kind of need to come out about that far. One chair here, one chair here. And it looks like I need to bring this up again a little higher. That's probably pretty good. And I'm just going to go ahead and make the tabletop out of this um, all that's already here. So I'm going to extrude this, right click on the numbers, send it down. And I'm going to extrude it the thickness of the table that it's, the table is going to be. And then I'm going to extrude the edges uh, of this uh, new polygon to create the table. Um, so I think the table is probably that about that thick there. Let's make it a little thinner. And uh, first, I'm going to extrude the ends. This table is rectangular. It's longer than it is wide this way. So I'm going to extrude these out. It looks like they don't go quite as far as the bar here. But that's something that you can play with in vertice mode to adjust the scale. And then I'm just going to extrude this out. That should be the table right there, I think. Um, there, it's a little longer than it is wide this way. So I'm going to hit the check mark. I'm going to be all right with that. Again, you can change the scale later if you want to. Uh, if you think it needs to be changed, the easiest way to do that is to go into an orthographic view. In my case here, I'm pressing uh, T to go into this view. I'm pressing G to get rid of the grid. And you can just grab vertices if you want to make them longer and scale them. I think I'll do that. All right. Now what I'm going to do is create a chair. So I want to be in orthographic mode when I do this. So I'm going to press L to press F3 to turn on the edged faces. I'm sorry, F3 to turn out of wireframe mode. F4 to turn on edged faces. And what I'm going to do is go to a view where I can see where the chair is going to be sitting. So that would be here. The chair is going to be here like this. And there's a little curve here. There's a slight curve up in the back a little bit for the lumbar support. So what I'm going to use is the line tool. This is probably the best way to do this. And it looks like the chairs go up a little bit higher than the table. So I'm going to say they go up here. They come down and curve down a little bit. Uh, it looks like around here. So I'm going to start down here uh, right at the base of the table. Start to curve up. Curve back there. And I'm going to stop there. And now I can go into Modify tab here. I can open up the line options and go to Vertex and adjust what I want to adjust by selecting them and rotating them or moving them or whatever the case may be. And that's what I'm going to do here just to change this up a little bit so it's more what I'm looking for. All right, and now to give it some shape, what you want to do is simply click on the rendering options, click Enable and Render, Enable and Viewport. It's probably more than likely a radial first, so you have to click on Rectangular to change that. And now you want to change the thickness, but first I'm going to move the whole thing to the middle of a section so I can judge how wide it needs to be. Okay, that looks pretty thin. So it looks like I need to adjust the table settings a little bit. Uh, that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and make the chair what I think it should be. That looks good. And I'm going to convert it into an editable poly. Now what I'm going to do is click on the table. I'm going to move the chair over a bit. And now I'm going to start scaling the table. I'm just going to go on the y-axis and change it a little bit with a scale. And I'm going to move the chair over and... 
Now, while I'm here, I'm going to click on the chair. I'm just going to hold shift, copy it over, and now I'm going to do the same thing. Hold control, click on the other chair, press E, hold shift while I rotate 180 degrees to make two copies. Press W and move them back to where they need to be. And then using the basic uh, extrusion philosophy of what we used here, uh, you just extrude down, and I think I'll do that right now on this to attach it to where the floor would be. So I'm going to extrude the thickness of these bars that come down. So I'm going to right click on the numbers right there. And now I'm going to select the bottom polygons of the corners and then extrude them to the floor. And that is going to be the table. Okay, it looks good. And now I'm going to hide this. And move on to the next thing. I guess it would be probably the pop machine. Again, I'm doing the same exact thing in this that I did in the last two um, things that I modeled. I don't know where the pop machine is. It's probably in my downloads folder, so I'm going to move it. Is it? it looks like it's not, so I'm going to save it. All right, I'll make this one. And I'm going to find, it uh, looks like that, I could use that, maybe, save image as Coke Ref. What else is down here? And you can look up Coke Advert and steal an image to put at the top of the soda fountain. I'm only going to look for a couple more seconds before I just get to moving on to modeling. Coke billboard. Okay, you can do something like that. I'm just going to save that. And use that as a model. So here I go. I'm going to go ahead and select this and use this as my reference image. And I'm going to start with a box that's going to be the thickness of this box back here. And then I'll cut every. Yeah, you know, just see. Make sure I adjust my view so I'm not creating a, a polygon way out in the space. All right, so it's the length of that, and now the thickness of it, and then the height. And what I'm going to do is convert it into an editable poly. And now I'm going to uh, connect two edges, one for this polygon to be extruded, one for this polygon to be extruded. But I'm going to do them one at a time because they're not equal distances from the top or bottom. So I'm going to do the bottom first for the tray, the water tray, and then I'll do the top which is about in the middle here, not including this top extrusion. So it's a little bit higher than the middle. So the middle, I guess, would be about here. So I'm going to go about there. And now I'm going to extrude the top. And now I'm going to extrude these two sections. This is going to be for the water tray and then the top uh, where the ice goes, I guess. And I'll extrude these together because they look like they're, they're the same. And then what I'm going to do is select these corners, these edges, I mean, these corner edges, to chamfer so they're rounded. It looks like I'm not going to round that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is, and I'm just going to round down here. Looks like the top is rounded and the edges, and I'm going to be all right with that. So the, f the only things you need to worry about when you chamfer is this option here and this option, the first two numbers. 
this determines how big the curve is going to be. And I don't need it to be very big. And then this one determines how smooth the curve is going to be. So for me, um, for this, that's going to be okay right there. So I'm just going to hit the check mark. And now basically the rest of this is just adding materials, um, which I will go ahead and do, I guess. I guess I'll add one here. And then I'll make the nozzles for you. The nozzles are fairly simple. I don't know why I keep doing that. The easiest way is just to click standard there. Right click, show shaded material and viewport, and then add the bitmap that I found, which I'm going to use this. And then I'm going to unwrap it. Modifier list, U, enter, tweak in UV editor. I'm going to hit this button here. I think I have some polygons somewhere that I didn't want. And yeah, on the side, I guess that doesn't matter. And I, whatever. Um, we'll see what it looks like. Basically, all I'm concerned with is what it looks like in the middle. And I'm going to zoom in. Okay, that looks pretty crappy, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and replace that with this bitmap here. That's easier to control. That looks good. And then well, I guess what I'll do is make a nozzle here. So it's basically just a box with a cone on the bottom. And I'm going to do that right now. So box. My view is slanted. Convert it into an editable poly. And if I look at the reference picture, it looks like that the front comes out a little bit. I know this from looking at pop machines. And then the back edge goes back in. So what that means is I'm going to select two, select this back edge right here. I'm just going to press W and move it back. And then the front one is slightly to the front. And now what I'm going to do is click one of these vertical edges, click ring, and then hit connect. And I'm going to make the polygon that I'm going to put the label on. So it looks like in this one, this this reference image is a little bit different than the one you have online. doesn't matter. Um, you can use that one or this one that I'm using. And you probably ask yourself, but I don't have that one. I have the one that's online. Well, you can you can go to Google and look up the one that I just found. And then you're probably, Mr. Midkiff, but my kids need fed. Yeah, well, feed feed the kids. That's a metaphor for uh, not watching YouTube. Although this is posted on YouTube. So watch YouTube. And then here is where you would put the Coke logo. I'm not going to unwrap that. It needs to fixed a little bit, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of this video. And then I'm going to get out of this. And also, if you look at this, there's a little push button up there that I would put if I were modeling this. And then the rest of the material would be black, not gray. I'll take points off for the gray. Make sure it's black. And make sure that you have a little push button up here if you're doing this model here. Um, but if you're not, make it sure it looks like the model that you are using. And what I'm going to say here is there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this off in this model here. Uh, the one you have online, I believe, have six. I want each one of the nozzles to be a different pop or soda pop, whatever you call it, soda. Okay. So right now I have one, and you would just hold shift and copy this over and then replace the pop logo. And then the nozzle is simple as creating a cone. scaling it down and it looks like a cylinder so I'm going to go in the settings here on modify option and change radius number two and then I would just rotate that and put it here and then I would copy these two objects together down and then change the nozzles and now the garbage can standard let's go here right click show shaded material and viewport and then add the material of the garbage can this is very easy the one I have here, make sure I don't have a twisted view. And I'm going to make the box here around the base. Let's see. Now I'm going to convert this into an edible poly. And I'm going to select the top polygon and extrude it. And you're probably asking why I'm doing that. Yeah, that's a good question. 
what I meant to do is this. Raise this the height of the garbage can, and then on the bottom, what I will do is inset this polygon. That makes way more sense. And then I will extrude the difference here on the base of this thing, where it stands on the ground. Okay. My uh, dimensions look a little off, so I'm going to select all the vertices, press R for scale, make sure that I have the white scale used, and there we go. So now I'm going to look at the picture of this garbage can, and it looks like what I need to do is connect some edges. So I'm going to do that, so select this edge here. That selects that edge, that row of edges, I suppose. And now I'm going to connect some edges and then move them that way. And now I'm going to select this line of edges and I'm going to connect one in the back for that polygon. So I'll connect one and move it back. And then I'm going to select the top outer edge of polygons like this. And I'm going to extrude these. The height of this section here. That looks good. And I'm going to select this edge here and this edge here. And I'm going to chamfer those for people that have a hard time in restaurants not knocking themselves out on hard corners. That's why they're there. I probably got sued and to get rid of the corner there. All right. Now what I'm going to do is you can, for this section here, you can just put a box in there. That's what I would do. Um, or you can connect some edges. And now basically what I'm going to get to that's more important is the um, the receptacles at the top. So I'm just going to make a cylinder. And I'm going to put it in the garbage can. And then I'll change the radius because it's too big. So I'll go to the modif modify panel here. Change the radius. Looks good. And I'll make sure it's centered up all nice on the left side by pressing T, go to orthographic view, and move it where it needs to be, and then hold shift and drag over. Try to line those up the best I can. Now I'm going to click on the garbage can here. Okay, now I'm going to go to the create panel, change standard primitives to compound objects, and then click on a boolean, or you can do pro boolean. I'm going to do boolean in this in this uh, instance. Click subtract and then add operands and click these two cylinders. You're going to get a segment right there that just an edge that cuts across there. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. And turn that into an editable poly. And I'm going to stop the video. Make sure you put materials on everything.